Lipsky. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I love this song because it's just so joyful and exciting. We have so much to praise the Lord for and with everything. So uh, let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for who you are and who you've made us to be. Thank you for all the reasons that we have to praise, whether that's how you worked in our lives or just the fact that you sent Jesus for us, God. Um, there's so much to praise for. There's so much to be thankful for. And I just pray that um, you speak through Andrew today as he gives us the message. And that whatever we're going through, whatever burdens or hardships or whatever we brought in with us today, God, um, that we can lay down and even in the midst of that sadness, praise you for who you are and for everything that you've done for us, God. In your name, amen. Well, this is it awesome? Oh, okay. That's great. I'm going to be going. I can't see you through a fog. I know my brain.
Uh, first of all, the Operation Christmas Child, you should have also, I think, in your bulletin, got a little slip with some more info on that. So that's great. Uh, that is coming up, even though December is a little ways away. Just be thinking of some good quality toys. You can save up school supplies. Um, the prayers for those kids who will get those gifts to understand the gospel more. And uh, if you want a good contact person for that Operation Christmas Child, uh, Lee Wolf Martha is a great person to talk to you about that. And uh, just something to be thinking about as you're maybe doing some fall cleaning around your house or doing some shopping. Also, uh, we are hoping to have the um, business meeting after the church just to talk about communion. So there's not going to be you know, extra minutes being read. We're just here to discuss how frequently we practice communion as a church. That's something that we've punted into today because of uh, bad weather in the past. And here we are again, but hopefully we can still um, discuss voice what's on your heart about this and look on where we go from here. So uh, if you are a member or if you are wanting to join that discussion, be sure to stick around in here just a little bit longer after the service ends and we'll talk about that together. Alright, and now Jen's going to come up and give some for the kiddos today. You want to face this way or you want to look that way? Either way. You can wave it. So did you have a good week? Sunny had a birthday. Did everybody know Sunny had a birthday? How old are you now, Sunny? You want to tell them? She's five. She is now officially five. So happy birthday from your whole church. And Pastor Andrew's going to talk a little bit about the body of our church. Not our body, this body. But our church body and how we can pray for each other and we can take care of one another and we're thankful for one another. Do you know what's in here, Koya? Remember we talked about it a lot. What's inside that we have? It's bop, 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 bop. Do you remember? It's hard, isn't it? To not, I can't tell what you're thinking because you don't want a mask. <laughs> I'm like, she might be saying it. So our heart, right? <laughs> We have a heart inside. You see that, Koya? There's a heart. Can you help me do something? Come up here for a second. You can hold the light. When we ask Jesus into our heart, he takes our, our heart and he lights it up. Whoops, my flashlight went up. Let's use this flashlight. I did bring two. He lights up our heart. What do you think, Sonny? He enlightens our heart. He gives us a new heart, doesn't he? And with that new heart, we can love others. You wanna you wanna hold the you wanna see what it looks like? Here, son, can you hold it up so she can see? There you go. So God gives us a new heart that that has a special spirit that we have a heart for others. Our heart that was once like an old rock, I picked up an old rock. Like that. See, our heart is one second like old rock that makes it squishy. Jesus makes it squishy. And now, the other one squeeze it. It's going to be cool. <laughs> we want a soft heart, don't we? We don't want a hard heart. Sometimes we get hard hearts because we get mad at somebody or we don't want to forgive somebody. But Jesus really wants us to have a squishy heart, just like this, right? Can you squish it? Wow. He wants our hearts all squishy. So today we have somebody that is in our church family that's kind of sad. She's not here today, but we're going to make make her, and maybe some other people can, Miss Beth's husband. Beth, so we're going to make her a little flower, and then we'll mail them to her to cheer her up. Can you all do that? I know. Because <laughs> she's part of our church family. And just what Pastor Andrew's going to talk about, just being in the family, how thankful we are that we don't have to go through life alone. So we want to remind us that, that she's not alone, that she has a church family. So let's pray and ask God to help us have squishy hearts and to remember those in our church family, okay? Can we close our eyes for a second? Just hold it still. God, we just thank you so much for today. Just be with our hearts. Let us have soft hearts, not hard hearts. Let us remember this in our church family that are hurting, especially our Miss Beth this week. Let us be with her and comfort her. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
battery might be dying out on some of the bits. You want to check if there's any extra bad bits in that one. So, if you use the chapter one, we're going to be picking this up back in verse 15. Let's reread the first part here. It says, This is why, since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I never stopped giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayer. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of this promise. We'll stop there for now. The whole second part of this chapter that we read earlier is a, a massive run-on sentence, just like the huge praise from last week. ...of his calling. What is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the mighty working of his strength? He exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead, seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, every title given, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he subjected everything under his feet and appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of of the one who fills all things in every way. Now, if you're a mathematically minded person, you could say that this prayer has three things that it wants us to know more. And it's all in that verse 18, 19 part. Right? Our hope in Christ is the first thing. The abundant inheritance of it all. And then the power of God in the gospel. And then that last request, that, that power of God stuff, gets an expanded explanation tagged onto it that fills up the whole rest of the chapter. Or, if, if you're not mathematically minded, you could just say, hey, it looks like Jesus' ascension into heaven is a pretty big deal. It, it, it seems like that's a big part of what we should be taking to heart. And either way, you'd be right. As tempted as we are to make taking things to heart a personal exercise in bettering ourselves, this prayer tears down the mirror and overwhelms our vision with the majesty of Christ's victory. How can I pray to know what I know more clearly, more deeply, when that seems so impossible, we ask? I've been trying to do this and it doesn't seem to be working well. Well, look at the power of God in raising Jesus from the dead, hiding him up over all spiritual forces on earth or in heaven that we can't even comprehend. That's the same power of God that he directs to us in growing us in this way. Are we asking for a miracle in this sermon, in this prayer? Yeah, actually, we are. We are asking for a miracle, but should that make you shrink back from this comfort and this challenge? But look at the far surpassing greatness of the one we're trying to know. Look at the miracle of all miracles in verses 19 to 23, and ask yourself if your dim and dusty heart is too hard for him to work with. Look at the grander glory of the Messiah seated next to the Father of lights over every spiritual and earthly thing and ask yourself if he isn't worth that much more than the things tugging you into darkness. Taking to heart what we know is a prayer that lasts a lifetime. And it's one we can pray because of the gospel. We can always be taken to higher ground because there is no hill that Christ has not claimed. We can always have the confidence that whatever hardship or heartache we face, we will never run dry of His fullness. Why can we pray 
that God the Father give us the Holy Spirit to know more of what we know. Because we, his gathered people, are the fullness of the one who fills all things, it comes to say back at the end. As detailed as this, this prayer can seem to get by the end, I think it actually moves more in a circle than a straight line. It, it loads us up with the hope and the riches of these fruits of redemption in our powerful Savior. But it does that to come back to the point of the prayer even stronger. How can we not pray for greater light seeing the warm and blinding radiance of God and the victory of Christ, in whom every ounce of heavenly blessing comes to us. How can we limit what God aims to do in us when He has funneled His full authority and wisdom and superior life in us, His people, in the fullness of Christ? How can we live in the shade of the dark we have made when the one who outshines the darkest night calls us to walk in his light? How can we doubt the willingness of our Heavenly Father to transform us when we see his unstoppable willpower raise Jesus victorious from the dead over sin and death? Taking what we know, though, to heart is a prayer that lasts a lifetime. We may feel like our heavenly home in Christ is sadly dim and dusty, but there is always more light from the Spirit to be had to help us take in our surroundings. We may feel like just being in that home in Christ is enough, and, and of course, all those realities we read about are there. But we always need to see better, to know better, to, to feel stronger, to love harder, to live in brighter light. In light of the good news of the one who saved us. This prayer is always here for us to pray. This prayer is always here for us to pray for others. Like this was originally prayed for others, for our families. For our church families, for, for our friends, for our mentors and our mentees. And taking what we know to heart as a prayer that lasts a lifetime. But who wouldn't want some more light to shine? I know that this dense chapter in Ephesians can be tough to chew, let alone swallow, the way that it presents all these fruits of redemption so rapid fire. So I'll encourage us to do something really practical that will help us take in what we've been hearing. Uh, every morning for the next week, you can read a, cha a chapter in Ephesians chapter 1. Focus on those heavenly blessings <coughs> in Christ. And that it draws out for us. And just pick one of those. Okay? Don't pick the same one every day. Maybe one day you're really convicted about this hope that we're called to belong to. Or maybe Tuesday you're struck by the redemption in Christ's blood in an earlier part of the chapter. Whatever it is. But then after you read for like five minutes, just pray at the start of the day. Lord, may your spirit shed his light and help me to take that to heart. Whatever that one thing is, Lord, help me to take that to heart. Help me to see that thing more clearly, more deeply, and more often. Do that for, for just a week. Just a short time in the morning every day and see how it's grown. Pray that for other people. Pray for each other here and talk to each other about it. When it comes to navigating dark rooms, the best houses that people want nowadays, it seems, are those with the most natural light. Right? Daylight, it's called. The more you can let the light in, expose what's inside to the light, the easier it is and the more pleasant it is to walk around. That's what we're after here in this prayer. Not forced, fake, fluorescent light. Not huddling in the corner in the dark until someone breaks down your door. Just letting in the light of God's Spirit to understand the Gospel. 
taking what we know to heart, is a prayer that lasts a lifetime. So let's get started. Let's go. Heavenly Father, in light of all the amazing, overwhelming fruits of redemption that we see in this chapter, I want to thank you for the people here, for their trust in you, for their love for each other. I want to ask that you might give us all your spirit in greater measure. Give us more of his light to take in our spiritual surroundings more clearly and more deeply. Lord, I want to pray that you would help all of us to know what we know. That you help us to know what is the hope of our calling. That you help us to know what are the glorious riches of our inheritance together in Christ. I pray that you help us to know the incredible power of your working in raising Jesus from the dead, your incredible power towards us, not sitting on your hands like an absent father, but wanting and willing and working in us to know you more, Lord. Can you help us? May you move what we know deeper into our hearts. Not just for ourselves, but for our families. Your friends. We pray all of these things in the name of Christ, our far superior reigning Lord in the heavens right now. It's in His name that we pray.
things that we know that to, to plunge into that adventure of, of greater depths and greater heights and knowing Him. And that may play itself out in our witness to those around us sharing that love with them.